They do a hell of a lot of damage. Feral. Atlas packed his pick and shovel for a visit to one of the most intriguing graveyards ever unearthed. These ancient bones tell an incredible story. A mass killing in the centre of Australia in a time before history. But what were these mysterious beasts that perished so long ago? And who or what killed them? Paleontologist Peter Murray has spent a lifetime trying to find out. Today he's taking me back in time to the scene of the crime. Back to the place where literally thousands of animals died. Uh, well, we're heading out to the Alcuda vertebrate locality. Just a few more kilometres, another 26 kilometres to go. The site, about 150 kilometres from Alice Springs, will give us a snapshot of a unique period in Australia's prehistory. Seven to eight million years ago, the continent began to dry out, going from thick woodland to the dry desert we see here today. Yeah, we're just going out to the current excavation area. That's a fair-sized pit. How long has it taken you to dig this? Since 1988, we've been working on this. This large pit is a mass grave part of a huge mat of fossilised bones that extends underground over an area 400 by 100 metres. Open this up a little bit. The bones here lie just a metre beneath the surface. And you can see the bones starting to show up right in there. So just peel this stuff off and then go bit. slowly down from there. Yep. Better get into it. But what exactly died here and why? To answer these questions, Peter begins the painstaking task of extracting the bones from their eight million year old tomb. How's it going, Pete? Good. There's a spot over here that has some good material showing up. Oh, look at that. What have we got here? Uh, a couple of arm bones showing up here, and they're coming out there nicely intact, and then a big vertebra. Any idea what then, sort of creature we're looking at? Yeah, they're, they're uh, plasidon, probably. So that's the sort of cow-sized wombat? Yeah. I've actually been out here before as a paleontology student many years ago, so I'm trusted not to do too much damage. But it's hard work in a very exposed location. After half an hour of digging, I'm down to the bone layer, and it's time to slow down and dig a little more carefully. Finding fossils at Alcuta is a frustrating business. You scratch away and then you hear that difference there, that squeaking noise? That means that I found a piece of bone in here. The trouble is, is that after eight million years of laying in the ground, the bones are all mushed up and you have to glue them back together before you can take them out. There's a piece of bone that I've exposed here. I haven't got a clue what sort of a bone it is, but pretty exciting find. Slowly, we're revealing the long lost clues to an ancient disaster. Clues Peter needs to reconstruct an eight million year old world. Each bone tells its own story. Uh, we have a tibia tarsus. This is the big long leg bone of one of the smaller giant birds. These bones might not look like much, but the story at Alcuta is unique. Why is it important to be digging here at Alcuta? Well, Alcuta actually opens up a little window in the centre of the continent. We're pretty darn close to the geographic centre of Australia, so we're actually looking at a quite unique community. This is sort of the first megafauna. The megafauna were huge mammals, birds and reptiles that dominated Australia until around 30,000 years ago. Alcuta preserves some of the country's oldest megafauna. So what can the bones we're finding tell us about these huge creatures? To find out, we need to head back to Alice Springs to the Museum of Central Australia. This is where the real detective work begins. Uh, here's the lab. Wow. All this material's from Alcuta? All from Alcuta. You must have thousands of specimens by now. There are indeed thousands. About 
four and a half thousand registered ones and then quite a few boxes in storage. It's a huge collection of bones that has taken Peter almost two decades to collect. But it's like a jigsaw puzzle with most of the pieces missing. Peter's challenge has been to separate the bones into the different animals they originally came from. Only then can he piece together some of the skeletons. And we're able to take the individual bones and match their sizes and then assemble it into a complete skeleton like we have right here. This huge flightless bird is called Dromornis and would have weighed in at a massive 500 kilos. It's a big bird. Is this like as, as big as birds get? It's among the biggest, um, probably equivalent in size to elephant birds in, in body mass. Surprisingly, its closest living relatives are ducks and geese. Some of the other skeletons Pete has been able to piece together are a couple of Alcuta's giant wombat-like creatures. So what are these two creatures? Well, basically, they're remote relatives of wombats. They're similar in many ways to, to living wombats, of course, much larger, but uh, still short-limbed, bulky, herbivorous animals. A skeleton is one thing, but what would these animals have looked like in life? Peter is a skillful artist and anatomist, and taking the skulls and bones, he painstakingly draws on each muscle to give him an idea of the shape of the living animal. Then, like a forensic artist, he begins to build up the shape of the flesh using plasticine. Until finally, he can see what the animal may have looked like eight million years ago. This is the head of Plasiodon, one of the giant wombat-like creatures. So what happened to this menagerie of strange animals? To find out, we have to revisit the scene of the crime. So how has this place changed in the last eight million years, Pete? Well, as you can see now, Paul, it's, a, it's just a grassy rolling plain sort of goes off for kilometers in all directions. But eight million years ago, it was forested with dry jungles. These were dense, thickety kinds of, uh, you know, sort of low story, but uh, closed forests. Uh, lots of species diversity in the plants. It has uh, large bushes underneath, devoid of grass in the understory. The trees that aren't more than three or four meters high. Eight million years ago, Dromornis, the huge 500-kilo bird, would have been walking around a forest like this, browsing on the trees. Beneath them, in the understory, would be the giant wombat creatures, such as Colopsis. So what happened eight million years ago to turn this thriving population into a desolate gravesite? Pete thinks he's got the answer. Through a careful examination of the bones, the landscape and the geology, Peter has come up with a probable cause of death. We think that the animals got trapped or tethered around a water hole, probably during a, a fairly prolonged drought. So what do you mean by tethered? By tethered, they were tied to the water hole because it was the only up water hole in the area. If they move away from it, they die of thirst. So they're actually dying of starvation around the last water That's in a right. long drought. Yep, they have probably adequate water supply, uh, no food. So the long lost animals of Alcuta became victims of climate change. Eight million years ago, as Australia began to dry out, their food disappeared and they starved to death during one of our earliest recorded droughts. It's a story Peter has put back together, piece by piece, an ancient tragedy in the centre of Australia. An ancient tragedy providing a fascinating modern story. Finally tonight, Mother Nature...